Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Greg McCloskey from ForexLive.com, and in today, today's day is October 15, 2014. I would take a look at five currency pairs in six minutes. So let's get going. We start with the euro versus US dollar. This is an hourly chart, and, and uh, yesterday was Columbus Day in New York, and toward the end of that day, we saw the uh, market move sharply to the upside here. Maybe a little lack of liquidity. Uh, maybe uh, it was uh, comments from Fed officials talking about oh uh, worries about uh, global growth and all that other stuff that forced the market to the upside here. We went above the 47 to 57 level. Remember that level was the low prices going back to 2013. This is a 47. This is a 57. This is on the weekly chart. Back to the hourly chart. That move above the 47 to 50, 46 to 57 level was brief, and then the market started to rotate to the downside. In in uh, European trading, we have weaker data come out in the form of industrial production and zoo uh, uh, the zoo. Uh, survey data uh, that said uh, bad news uh, for the eurozone until we saw uh, the market move uh, down even further. Came down to the 50% retracement of this move up from the October low to the October high. That level came in at 126.45. And then the market suddenly found a reason to pause, a cause for pause. And that's where we spent the, roast, re the rest of the New York trading day kind of correcting a little bit to the upside back to the old 38.2 falling short short of this hundred hour moving average that's a blue line in this chart in overnight trading and going forward this is going to be my line in the sand I don't want to see the price move back above that hundred hour moving average if it does I'm out of there uh, for this uh, currency pair if it doesn't then we're, what we're going to be looking for is a rotation to the downside, a break through the 50%, and finally getting a close on an hourly basis and momentum, hopefully, below that 50% retracement level at the 126.45 level. And then we'll be looking down toward our low areas here around the 61.8% retracement and then down to this area right here at the 125.71 to 84 level, ultimately moving our way down toward the 125 level as possible. Sure, it's possible, but uh, it, uh, it'll, it'll take a little work. We'll see. Let's take a look at the uh, sterling versus U.S. dollar. This currency pair made new lows, new lows for the year, trading at the lowest level going back to November of 2013. And that's going to be our next target on the downside is these November lows. This low, the lowest level in November came in at the 158, 158.50. Uh, 53 level and uh, not far away from that level is this uh, trend line here this trend line connecting uh, most all well, these lows right here here and that level comes around the 43 so 43 to 53 is going to be our next target support overnight as long as the bias remains to the downside for the pound versus us dollar what well, would we keep the bias to the downside well actually i'm going to take a look at the five minute chart here and one of the little clues that we're going to look for is uh, staying below the hundred bar moving average on the five minute chart we got close to it here in the market sold off and then we made new lows and we kind of been going sideways now now um, if it does move above this level it's not the end of the day what you're going to be watching is the 38.2 to 50 percent and really this 200 bar moving average on the five minute chart we don't want to see the price move above the 200 bar moving average on the five minute chart if it does and the waters get a little bit more muddy for this currency pair so let's be aware of that and let's uh, uh, understand that. If we stay below the 100 bar moving average, though, we're going lower and we're going to see the price uh, uh, move down toward that support level at that uh, 58, 50, uh, what is it, 50, 43 to 53 level on the downside with a 158 handle. Let's take a look at the dollar versus Canada. Don't often talk about this uh, currency pair because it moves back and forth and back and forth. But we did extend the trading range for the year year here today to, uh, to making, new, making new highs. It's a good thing because the trading range for the dollar versus Canada Canada is at its lowest level since 1996. That's for the calendar year. We've only done about 692 pips uh, in 2014. And again, last year, as an example, we did 923 pips. The year before, we did about 820 pips. And the year before that, about 1,252. We're only at 692 currently at the moment. That's the lowest level since since uh, uh, 1996. So there is a chance that we get further momentum to the upside here on the break to the upside. You would expect that, wouldn't you? Where do we not want to see the price move below? Where is my line in the sand for this pair? At the old high at 112. 69 we shouldn't go back below that 112 69 look for support against that level and a rotation to the upside next target on the top side uh i have looking at this uh trend line here just connecting the most recent highs on that level uh comes in around the 1352 and moving higher every hour so pay, pay attention to that level uh let's uh, move on to the euro yen we're on currency pair number four the euro yen again um 
we um, we move below this area right here. You see this area right here around the 136.53 level, and then uh, we came down down here and then corrected up. And where do we find resistance? Right at that 136.53 level. And we stayed below that level, moved all the way to the downside here in trading, came down to support trend line right here, a reason to buy. Now we have this 38.2 to 50% retracement of the move to the downside that we're going to be watching for resistance here at the 59 to 77 level. As long as we stay below that level here, I think we have a chance to rotate to the downside. I'm not all that thrilled. We're back above this high right here, however. So, but, so this is our last line in the sand here. Otherwise, we're going to see a further corrective move probably up to the trend line, maybe up to the 100-hour moving average on the upside here for the euro versus yen. So pay attention to that. Finally, let's uh, take a look at gold. Gold. Gold is at a key a level here. Uh, remember, uh, on October 7th, we talked about uh, gold moving to the upside here. We had moved above the 100-hour moving average or moving above that level, and we held it here. And then we started to hold the trend line here and hold the trend line, hold the trend line, hold the trend line. Today, we went a little bit above the old high and then fell below it. So that's a little bit, a little chink in the armor here in gold on the hourly chart. Watch the 100-hour moving average. As long as we stay above the 100-hour moving average, it's bullish. If we go below that level, uh, things will be a little bit more um, bearish for gold. Off the daily chart, uh, where we're stalling at is uh, against the 38.2% retracement of this move to the downside, also against low here, low here. So the, this area right here is good resistance for gold, and that's why we're stalling there. So we have a little battle going on here between this area right here and going back to the hourly chart, the 100-hour moving average. There you have it, five currency pairs in six minutes and 40 seconds. Not bad. My name is Greg Michalowski. Good fortune with your trading. Bye-bye now.